So we are working on some of our foundation pieces to help us figure out how these techniques of differentiation came about in the first place. So let's move on to our next example. All right, in part A, we want to find the derivative of the function y equals x squared minus 5x. In part B, we want to separate it out and figure out what the derivative of x squared is and the derivative of negative 5x is, and we're doing all of this by looking at the definition. And then in part C, we're going to figure out how the derivative that we found in part A is going to relate to those separate derivatives that we found in part B. Again, you have all of the information to answer these questions on your own. So pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer to part C, depending upon the answers to part A and B. So focusing on part A, again, I'm not going to walk you through all the steps, but I will show you the work. Okay, again, to our three-part definition, the first part, f of x plus h, the second part, substituting that into our difference quotient. The third part is taking the limit as h goes to 0, substituting 0 in for h. And so what we have left is dy dx. And notice we're using this notation because our original notation was y, so we want to keep our notation consistent. So our derivative, or our dy dx, is equal to 2x minus now we're going to keep that in mind because we're going to figure out how that partners up with the derivatives that we find here of y equals x squared and y equals negative 5x. Again, I'm not going to walk you through all of these steps here to come up with these derivatives. And I'm not even going to show you the work to the derivative of y equals x squared because we just did that in the last video. We know the derivative of that came up to be 2x. So now all we have to do is compute the derivative of y equals negative 5x. And actually, we don't have to do the work of that by using the definition either, because we know this is a linear equation. And so we know the derivative is going to give us the slope. And so the slope of this equation is negative 5. So, in fact, we don't even have to use the definition of these two derivatives because of some of the foundation pieces that we've already used. Okay, so we found the derivatives of these two pieces individually. And now we're going to answer part C. How is the derivative that we came up with in part A of y equals x squared minus 5x? Remember, that derivative came up to be 2x minus 5. Compare with the derivative for these separately, where our y equals x squared, the derivative piece was 2x, and y equals negative 5x, the derivative piece is negative 5. Well, notice, okay, if we had to actually add these two pieces here, and it's okay for me to insert that addition sign there, that just changes my problem from a subtraction to a plus negative. Same thing, I can insert it here, where it just changes my problem from a subtraction to a plus negative, which we know means the exact same thing. So if I have my first piece plus my second piece, my derivative ends up being my first derivative plus my second derivative. So how are they related? If we can separate out our original functions by addition, then we can also separate out our derivatives of each piece by addition. And yet, we have just came up with one more foundation piece to help us come up with these best techniques to find our derivatives. In the next video, I have one more foundation piece, and then I'm finally going to be showing you these techniques or these shortcuts that I keep referencing.